just now I came from class where the students in the uh, first year, you know, Oz Foundation class are doing the last four weeks, they're doing team projects. I know nothing about the topic. They know at this point, they now know more about it than I do. And there's one team working on issues about environmental chemicals, which I know zero about. Some of the other topics I know a little bit about. And the, I, nine years ago when I came to Olin, I never would have designed a project like that because I would have felt uncomfortable knowing nothing about the topic, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So there was, I came in here definitely with a sense of, you know, and it being the expert, and you're the expert on something, and that, that's your role in the classroom, is you're bringing your expertise and sharing it. Mm -hmm. And now, you know, when I look, if I were, uh, you know, bird's eye view on my classroom, I wouldn't even recognize that I would mm -hmm. conceive of putting myself in a situation where I don't know what the students are talking about, yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know. Mm -hmm. But I still, and to think that there's a role for a professor in an environment like that would have been shocking to me. Mm -hmm. But there is, a, you know, like, I mean, helping them to conceive of what are appropriate goals and how do you find the resources you need and, uh, and scope appropriate questions and how do you deal with, you know, understanding what the respective aims are of people in your team and, mm -hmm. and you know, how do you deliver something at the best. That's yeah, it's interesting. interesting to think about that transition from framing teaching as being about teaching stuff, right. right, to framing That teaching. you're an expert on. Yeah, yeah that you're an Being expert on, right, the things right. that I am qualified, yeah. I, I did a PhD in this area, therefore I am qualified to teach uh -huh. this versus sort of framing teaching as being much more about helping students to develop thinking skills and helping students to develop other kinds of personal competencies and the ability to learn to learn and, and so yeah. on, and that it, that's certainly been a big transition I've gone through at, at Olin, I think a lot of us have. It's, yeah, I think that is, for me, that is the transition that's mm -hmm. been um, the most significant um, and the most transformative in terms of my own um, identity as a mm -hmm. as a mm -hmm. faculty member. Yeah, I, mean, I, too, yeah. I don't think of myself or look at myself uh, at all in the same way as I did 12, 13 years ago. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When I when I gave up being the expert yeah. and and started creating entirely new environments that were more autonomy supportive and that did put me in these situations where I didn't really have a clue uh, how to help students. Um, there, that was sort of the start of a recognition that I need to develop an entirely new skill set mm -hmm. and be a different person and develop the competence around it. And it feels like that's something that I think we share. I think probably a lot of Olin faculty share, but I think we also share in the sense that we probably develop those skills through the process? Yeah. 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 I mean, I think it's a long process. Yeah. I, I mean, I think one thing that probably helps, has helped a lot, for a lot of Olin faculty in that is has been team teaching. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um, that sort of puts you into an environment where there's stuff that you don't know. Mm -hmm. But it, it, to a certain extent, there's a little bit of a safety net mm -hmm. around that. And then you've got a colleague who maybe does know, does know that. At the same time, it also makes you have to sort of have to admit that you don't know some things. I remember early days of uh, teaching with Rob. The first time we tried to teach an integrated course together, it wasn't at all integrated. There was a you know material science syllabus and a history syllabus, uh, and then a project that was supposed to tie things together. Um, and we were still getting to know each other, developing an ability to communicate with each other, kind of gaining a shared understanding of what it was we were trying to do. It took several years for us to get to a point where we felt like we could actually really start to integrate. Uh, but I remember the first time we were teaching, there were moments when Rob would be up at the board presenting some kind of history of technology topic um, and uh, or discussing or facilitating a class discussion. And I'd be in the back, you know, working on my computer or kind of casually listening. And then he totally put me on the spot. Hey, John, John, I bet you have something to say on this topic. <laughs> and, I'd be, and, I, and, I, and I'd kind of give this look of shock. And I'm like, uh, you know, sometimes I did, but oftentimes you're like, I Sorry, Rob. Talking. I got nothing. <laughs> like, I don't. I don't even understand the words that you're using at the front of the classroom. Right instructors. Yeah. I ended up team teaching with Chris Heap, who's mm -hmm. a designer from uh, from Denmark, who's here for the year, and basically sort of ended up apprenticing to him yeah. for the rest of that semester. Mm -hmm. And that was just an awesome experience mm -hmm. to like work with this designer, about, talk to him about how he was thinking about interacting with students in that studio setting. Mm -hmm. What were the things he was looking for? How was he reflecting mm -hmm. on the the things that he'd heard? Um, you know, and that kind of set me up to then, and a bunch of other faculty have done this as well, get involved in teaching user-oriented design mm -hmm. multiple times. 
And I'm, I'm not a designer, right? I, I'm not an expert in that area, but I know something about it now and I can facilitate students effectively in that setting. And it's also something that's hugely influenced the way that I teach other classes. It's hugely influenced the work that I do. And I'm like, you know, one of the you know, things I've done is sort of transition to more things that are in the sort of working to change engineering, engineering education space as opposed to the transistor research space, which mm -hmm. is what I did before. And certainly the, the user-oriented design experience has helped me a lot in thinking about how do you how do you construct experiences to help faculty go through that shift. Yeah. So, and that I sort of feel like that learning yeah. and that learning outside of my disciplinary area um, has been just an amazing opportunity. It's been one of the coolest things about being a faculty member here for, for me. I agree.